This video is the first in a suite of tutorials on the ins and out of assigning the correct nomenclature to genes, quantitative trait loci or QTLs, and strains. In this video, we will briefly look at the history of biological nomenclature, why it is important to standardize nomenclature, and who is in charge of assigning nomenclature for objects in various species. The other videos in this series will look in more detail at nomenclature for genes, QTLs, and strains. The need for standardized nomenclature for biological entities, whether genes, alleles, QTLs, strains, or markers, has long been recognized in segments of the research community. As early as 1919, the American Society of Naturalists saw the need for standardization of genetic nomenclature and appointed the Committee on Genetic Form and Nomenclature headed by C.C. C. Little, the founder of the Jackson Laboratory. The report of that committee was published in 1921, but it had little effect. Since then, a substantial amount of work has been done on standardization of nomenclature for genes, strains, and QTLs. For example, the first Mouse Gene Nomenclature Guide was published in 1940. The Committee on Standardized Nomenclature of Inbred Strains of Mice published its first list of nomenclature for inbred strains in 1952. In 1958, the groups working on recommendations for nomenclature of mouse genes and of mouse strains merged to form the Committee on Standardized Genetic Nomenclature for Mice. In 1957, an international committee published recommendations for human gene symbols and names. A full set of guidelines for human gene nomenclature was issued in 1979 at the Edinburgh Human Gene Mapping 5 workshop and adopted as the official system for human gene nomenclature at the Oslo Human Gene Mapping 6 workshop in 1981. Standardization of rat nomenclature came online in 1992 when the Institute of Laboratory Animal Resources, ILAR, of the National Research Council's Commission on Life Sciences undertook to form the Committee on Rat Nomenclature, which later became the Rat Genome and Nomenclature Committee. The report of this committee was published on the ILAR News and covered nomenclature recommendations for rat strains, genes, and non-genic loci. To further disseminate the recommendations for rat gene nomenclature to the rat research community, Levin et al. then published a summary of nomenclature guidelines in the journal Mammalian Genome in 1995. Nomenclature guidelines are updated on an ongoing basis to adapt and incorporate the changing needs of the research community. Copies of the updated guidelines for rat and mouse are available on both RGD and MGI websites. Human Gene Nomenclature Guidelines are available on the Hugo Gene Nomenclature Committee website. With regards to genes, more recently the emphasis on standardization of nomenclature goes beyond publications of species-specific recommendations. The fields of comparative genomics and translational medicine require that gene symbols are consistent across multiple species. After a number of years where nomenclature groups for specific species informally collaborated to standardize nomenclature, in October 2009, a meeting on gene nomenclature across species was convened. The conclusions from that meeting were reported in the February 2010 issue of the Journal of Human Genomics and included consensus naming of genes based primarily on the human nomenclature, which is already in use for human, mouse, rat, chicken, zebrafish, and xenopus, should be expanded to include other vertebrate species in the future. The group encouraged the formation of species-specific nomenclature committees to oversee the assignment of gene symbols and names. For mammals, the aim is at least one committee per taxonomic order. The group stressed the necessity of official written guidelines for gene nomenclature and the need for greater community awareness of the vital role that standardization of nomenclature plays in ensuring that the results of biological research are communicated unambiguously. 
Also, such awareness needs to extend to the scientific journals, most of which do not currently require authors to use correct nomenclature. The report also mentioned the need for synchronization of nomenclature updates across the publicly available resources. To avoid confusion, nomenclature for a single gene should match across all of the species. Finally, participants encouraged engaging the research community in the complex process of gene family identification and nomenclature assignment in assignment of orthologs, which forms the basis of sharing gene nomenclature across species. Many of the established model organisms used in research already have their own nomenclature organizations. This video series will concentrate primarily on nomenclature for the rat. This work is done by curators at the Rat Genome Database. RGD assigns and approves nomenclature for rat genes for variants such as mutants, alleles, splice variants, and SSLPs for quantitative trait loci and for strains. During this process, RGD curators consult and collaborate not only with members of the mouse and human nomenclature committees, but also with members of the research community who are considered experts in their fields and who can supply valuable insights into the function, orthology, and nomenclature history of the objects in question. The need for collaboration between curators for multiple species and the research community is particularly important when dealing with large gene families. Working from the nomenclature guidelines for rat, mouse, and human, and from information on the relationships among the genes in a single species and the orthology between species, curators and researchers work together to establish meaningful and informative nomenclature for all of the known and predicted genes in a family. This may seem like a surprising amount of effort just to assign symbols and names to biological objects. After all, shouldn't researchers have the right to call genes, QTLs, and strains that they work on whatever they want? The answer to that question is yes, but... Consider this. As a researcher, I could name my blood pressure QTL after my dog George. But when other researchers are looking for blood pressure QTLs, how will they know whether GGE1 is a QTL for blood pressure or something else. Alternatively, I could call it blood pressure 1 on the grounds that it is the first blood pressure QTL I have mapped, but then how can that BP1 QTL be distinguished from the first blood pressure QTLs mapped by other researchers? In order to unambiguously identify a particular gene, QTL, or strain, centralization and standardization are key. For RAT, the RAT genome database's function is to consolidate and oversee nomenclature assignments in order to assure such unambiguous identification. In the remaining videos of this series, we will go over the processes of assigning nomenclature to genes, QTLs, and strains, and outline the guidelines for nomenclature for these objects. Thank you for watching this presentation.